Mr. Steve, how are you doing? How are you doing I'm with doing your okay. meetings? I'm doing No real problems. I'd like you to take a look at it, though, and see what you see. Absolutely. I need to look at it. Okay. Are you having any pain? Uh, there's a little pain where, that, where this plastic ring, where this plastic ring Where the disc is. Uh -huh. Okay. And I disc. see that you've put some gauze under it, like we told you to. That's a good thing. Are you having any drainage? Yes. Each day, there's a little drainage. So that's why I went to the gauze. Okay. And part of the reason is that sometimes this little disc will slide out a little bit. You may notice that it gets a little looser and your disc slides out a little on the tube. Yes, ma'am. And if you pull it down, snug it down a little closer to the skin, that will help because there's a disc inside that pulls up against the stomach wall and that will help to block drainage. There's no valve in the tube, so fluid can leak along that tube to the outside. But if you snug this disc down a little better, that will help. Okay. Now, if you find that it's really loose and it continually slides out, right. you can put a piece of paper tape right around the tube here, okay. just several times wrapped around the tube, and that will actually keep the disc from sliding out farther. And then that will reduce the amount of drainage. Yes, that will help reduce okay. the amount of drainage. Okay. You may always have a little bit of drainage. That's normal. Okay. But we do have some ointment that you can put on your skin that will help protect it from that drainage because that drainage is pretty acidic. So I've got some calmoceptine ointment here. Why don't we put a little bit on your skin and okay. see how that works for you. Okay. So we're just going to take this gauze okay. loose, if that's okay with you. Good, thank you. And I don't want to pull your hair, but since you're a little bit hairy there, we're going to have to pull it a little bit. Now, some people do shave around that, and then they don't have that hair, but most people don't. They usually just put the tape on them, take it off gently. I'm just going to put a little bit on this Q-tip here, mm -hmm. and about the amount of a matchstick. Tell you what, I'm going to let you hold this a little bit for me right there. Thank you. And we're just going to tip it up a little bit, and I'm going to put this pink ointment all the way around this tube. And I notice you've got a little sore there on the bottom where that disc is That's where the pushing disc. into the skin. Right. right. Uh -huh. So putting that gauze there is going to help that a lot. I'm going to get you a clean gauze to put on there. And I noticed you had one little piece of tape. That's good. We actually like it to be open to air as much as possible mm -hmm. because that helps it to heal and it keeps down bacteria. Now, did you like your gauze folded in half? Uh, no, or just one, open single? Oh, open one time. Yeah. Okay. And a lot of people will just tuck the gauze up under there and let it stay without tape. Because okay. usually if the tube is snugged down tight, the gauze will stay there. I'm going to go ahead and put a little piece of tape on it since that's the way you had it. But that's your personal preference, yeah, whether I, I just, or not, that you want tape. Yeah. Okay, so there you go. You're set to go. So we're good but to it looks good. That little place will heal right there, and keeping that ointment on it will keep the skin dry. It's a good barrier, and that will help it heal. How will we know when will the, the tube come out? When will it be time to take the tube out? Well, that depends on how you do with your swallowing. Now, it's real important for you to keep swallowing something the whole time that you're going through your treatment. We want you swallowing water. We want you swallowing milkshakes or puddings if you can. Mm -hmm. And you need to do your exercises that you've right. been given as well. Mm -hmm. The more you swallow during treatment, the better your muscles will function and the sooner your tube will come out after your treatment. As soon as you can maintain your weight without using your tube for about two weeks, we'll take it out. And it's done right here in the office. It's a real simple procedure. It takes about two minutes. Okay. Okay, great. Do you have any other questions? No, that's, that's wonderful. I, I'll just uh, continue eating uh, what I can and uh, keep, we'll keep monitoring the weight. and. Right, and as your oral intake goes down, then your tube feeding intake is going to need to go up to compensate. So we want to keep your calories about steady, and the goal is to maintain your weight. Whatever amount of nutrition it takes through your tube to maintain your weight, that's our goal during okay. treatment okay. because you'll heal better, and you want to stay dehydrated because you will feel better, and you won't end up in the, you won't be as likely to end up in the hospital if you stay really well hydrated during your procedures. I understand. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. All right, now I'm going to give you a little demonstration of my, of my uh, little process of taking care of my uh, tube that I go through every day. And I'm just going to unbutton my shirt here a little bit. Usually I have gotten out of the shower. And this is what the tube looks like. So you can get an idea. And here we are. As you see, Hold this up here. Here's the tube. 
And you heard me mention earlier a, a, a nipple that is uh, uh, stitched to your stomach when you come out of the hospital after it's installed. Mine came loose. It hasn't been a problem. No one has said anything about we need to reinstall it or whatever. And we talked about uh, the inlet valves that have little tops on them right here. You see the little top right here? Just I'll squeeze this so that no fluid from my stomach will come out. See there? Same here. Uh, this is a, uh, uh, an air device that the tube goes into your stomach, air is put in here, it inflates a, a ring inside your stomach that holds it in there. Uh, when they get ready to remove this tube, they'll let the air out of this, the ring inside will deflate and it'll come, it'll come out easily. So what I'm going to show you now is my little this thing here. This is my, uh, my daily uh, patch that I put on. Remember I told you that there's a little seepage that comes out, but, and this is soft, because you see right here, right here I was getting uh, a bruising and a, and a rawness I mentioned a while ago, where this little ring was rubbing against it and keeping it, keeping it a little raw. So each, after the shower each morning, I think a little alcohol tube here, a little alcohol thing, swab, clean the area good. Just wipe this off, clean the area good. And uh, water hasn't hurt it. Uh, like I've been in the shower, water, water hasn't hurt it. I think you're... The, the uh, okay. There we go, keep it real good. Okay. Uh, water will not hurt it at standing in the shower. I think you will be advised not to sit in a tub or soak. Uh, while you have the tube in. And then I have a little gauze here. Let's see what we have here. Yes, a little gauze right here. And this is a little gauze I was telling you about that's going to uh, catch any drainage and it's going to serve as a cushion between my skin and the little plastic nipple that supports the tube. And I just pick it up here. Can you get that camera guy? Stick it right in here like that. Tape it down here. Tape it down over here. And I'm ready to go for the day. Sometimes I'll take and tape this up if I think I'm going to be, uh, like I have a, a tight shirt on or, or a, uh, a t-shirt or something. But uh, that's just, uh, to me, that's optional. It hasn't created a problem just hanging down. Passing myself back up, and then I'm ready to go about the day. Painless, and that, that happens every day. We just talked about how I take care of the outside of the tube and, uh, and the, the uh, hygiene part of the outside. Now I'm going to show you uh, as an example of, how, of my feeding the tube and cleaning the tube, and we're going to use our imaginations a little bit here. Uh, you'll be given several of these syringes, and I suggest that you ask for two or three of them because you're going you're gonna to find it's easier if you have more than one. And we're going to assume that this is uh, one of the products that's available in the stores now. Uh, Insure is one that's a brand name. Uh, Boost is another one. They are a daily uh, nutrient supplement. And they're what works well for what we're doing right now. You just take the, take the uh, syringe, put it in your product. Okay, I'm just going to pull it up there some. All right. I'm going to lay this down right here because now I have to go to my tube, squeeze the, squeeze the soft parts so that there's no fluid from the stomach that comes out. Open it up. We're going to put it in there, and I'm just going to push it down. Ooh, it's cool, cool water. And yes, you can actually feel the cool water. Now, you can also do this with milkshakes. 
Anything that you can get into this syringe, you can do that. After I have uh, had my prescribed amount of nutrition, uh, food for that particular feeding time, I'll take clean water, fresh clean water, magic, magic, now it's clean water, and we're going to do the same thing. We're just going to flush it out. Just like we did before. I usually like to flush it two or three times. Now you're going to see why it's important to have more than one syringe. Because if I had another syringe, I would just set this one down, pick up the second one, and push it in. With only one syringe, I have to stop, put the cap in, draw fresh water back in. So once again, have several syringes on hand. Okay, and I think that's it. And then I usually take and wipe it off a little bit. And clean the top of it, and we're good to go. Until the next meal time.